Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and we are back in the retro rebound room. I swear to God, we don't just hang up this little curtain back here. This is actually a different room. I swear. Comments don't believe me, but I swear. Anyway, welcome one, welcome all to another little Bethesda Game Studios retrospective. Y'all have been enjoying these kinds of videos here on the channel, and I thought, well, let's do another one. So we did Fallout 3. We did Fallout New Vegas. Now we got to get into Elder Scrolls, all right? And we got to go back to... Probably what I think, in a lot of ways, is my favorite Elder Scrolls game. And that's Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Specifically, we're taking a look at the Game of the Year edition in today's video. I have a lot of thoughts on this one, but the reason I'm doing all this is in preparation for Starfield, right? A lot of us are excited to lay our eyes on Starfield for the first time. We're getting those Bethesda Game Studios vibes going. And this is a game that I often connect to Starfield. Now, I know what you're thinking, like, what are you on, Maddie? One's fantasy, one sci-fi. I will explain some of the parallels before we see any of the game, mind you. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here and you're into these little retrospectives, it's kind of been my way of fueling the review side of myself because I love doing reviews and there hasn't been much to review. So consider subscribing with that. Let's take a look at the experience of the complete box copy for Elder Scrolls for Oblivion, Game of the Year edition. You pull this off store shelves, what do you get? For those who are interested in picking this up, complete in bucks, it's about like 10 bucks online. And Bethesda Game Studios has like goaded type of complete in box games. You'll see why. Let's flip it over to the back. So this is different from what you get from the standard 360 version. And the reason I go with this one is because this comes with all the DLC. So you'll see it says Oblivion, Knights of the Nine, Shivering Isles, one of the greatest expansions ever a lot of people's favorite bethesda game studios expansion for mine it's it's far harbor definitely but it says the complete oblivion collection the game of the year edition includes the award-winning game plus knights of the nine and the remarkable shivering isles expansion with a couple of screenshots here all that good stuff i always find it interesting that 2k is on the box art here for publishing this is when bethesda game studios wasn't mighty big 100 man team they were hard carrying the entire bethesda brand as they were dropping stinkers like rogue warrior all over the place so they had to get a little help publishing worldwide, and so 2K was willing to stand up to the task. So, cracking it open, two discs. I like that this game has the little disc flop thing here. What do you call this? The extra disc holder? I don't... <laughs> English, Maddie. Uh, anyway, I like that it's got this little extra holder here uh, because I just did a video over on Retro Rebound for, it was Final Fantasy 13, and they just take one of these holders and stack three discs on top of it. And Lost Odyssey does the same thing, although it's worse. It's four discs. So I like that Bethesda was like one disc, two disc. Now, for those of you who want to buy the complete box game, you throw it in your Series X. This is back and pat. It does have FPS boost. This is the best way to play it. It's why I went with 360. Do know that if you were to ever collect this and you only got one disc, the way Xbox does it is you throw this disc into your drive when you do so. It downloads the game online and eventually you can just take the disc out. It doesn't matter. It's kind of like an authentication key. And if the game's available on Game Pass, which this is, it'll just download that version instead. So just keep that in mind. What I'm really excited to go through here is the manual. And then this is why I say that these copies are goaded, the map, the maps, the Bethesda Game Studios maps. I love that they do these because I, I used to use these all the time as a kid. And so I just thought, that this was really nice of them to add in. They've done it for all of their major games, as far as I know. I don't know, did they do it for 76? That's one I don't think they did it for, but I'm pretty sure Fallout 4 had it. But this is just, mmm, mmm. The province of Cyrodiil. Check that bad boy out. It's just so cool that they have it. And it's funny because I, I pay extra for all these types of things sometimes, and I just keep them nice and folded up in my copy. <laughs> I don't even... I don't even hang it up on my wall. Maybe one day, but uh, this is absolutely beautiful. You can see like Hammerfell, Skyrim, Morrowind, uh, really awesome. And then of course the entire map you'll be exploring. But I'm terrified I'm gonna ruin this thing, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna calmly fold it back up. Oh dear, it's fighting with me. I'm scared. Nope, nope, we got it. We're good. We're good. <laughs> All right. So that's the map it comes with. And then you'll also get this little manual here. A little is putting it lightly. It's a, it's a thick boy, I like to call it. Look at that. Look at the look at the girth on this manual. Um, I also love the artistic style of it. It's kind of like you're reading out of a book, um, like based off the, the edging artwork here. 
Um, and this goes over everything that you'll see in the game, all the menus and stuff. Oblivion was a transformative RPG, so it's really smart that they went through all this. Everything has long text descriptions, even down to like how active quests work. And I thought that was a nice little attention to detail. The races all have their own little illustrations here that they are describing. And then they show their skill bonuses, their specials, because that obviously defines your character build. They go over all the attributes, and then they even get into systems like the skills, which is a pretty complex system for Oblivion, especially at its time. The magic skills you can get, and then towards the back here, they get into a particular mechanic that I know a lot of you like, the classes, customizing your own classes, picking your major and minor skills love that business we'll talk about that in a little bit and then of course the real defining mechanic for a lot of people they go over in just a couple of pages here i believe uh, there it is spell making and enchanting spell making in oblivion is is so awesome so that's what you'd get in a complete box copy of elder scrolls for oblivion way back when now let's talk about why i think you should play this game in 2022. this may sound weird it kind of is weird, but one of the driving reasons for it is Starfield. There are a scary amount of, in my opinion, parallels between Oblivion as well as Starfield. A lot of it goes down to timing. Obviously, the style of the game isn't maybe going to be very Oblivion-esque. I imagine it's going to be a lot more like Skyrim. But what I mean by this is the timing and the generation that Oblivion launched, right? Because Oblivion was an Xbox 360 exclusive for some time until it eventually came to the PS3. I don't think a lot of people knew that. It was in the launch window, much closer to the launch of the 360, by the way, as Starfield has now been put into 2023. But anyway, it was a launch window exclusive, much like Starfield. And it was a game that really defined BGS moving forward. It was a kind of prove it moment because they surprised people with Morrowind, this absolutely incredible open world RPG. It's like, can Oblivion do it again? And with a small team like Bethesda Game Studios, a lot of people thought, no, probably not. And they proved people wrong, right? They they were a hundred man team, give or take, which is very small for the size of games they make. And especially Oblivion, which has hundreds of locations, hundreds of quests, tons of different builds you can do. It does have some shortcomings because of that we'll talk about, but there was a lot of proven energy with this game. And I think a Starfield is kind of like that. And it's funny with the delays, I feel like those connect these two games together. And also the way Bethesda Game Studios has spoken about Starfield versus Oblivion with going a little bit more hardcore while still retaining their DNA. To me, that's a big standout because Oblivion was that perfect hybrid between Elder Scrolls III Morrowind and Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, where Skyrim has gone more casual, and I love Skyrim, so don't take that as disrespect, but it has. And then three of Morrowind is so hardcore that in some elements, it's kind of unplayable. Where I feel like Oblivion took the best of both worlds. There are a lot of hardcore elements, but there's a lot of streamlined mechanics and exploration and difficulty options that make this game still to this day accessible. Its biggest thing holding it back in a lot of ways is its age, which is why here on Mr. Matty Place, we talk a lot about Sky Oblivion. Parallels aside, let's talk about the game itself. So it's fun to make this video because I haven't made a re-review of Oblivion in a while and it's because I was holding off until Sky Oblivion and I felt like this was a perfect stopgap to hold myself personally over as well uh, because I think it's been since 2018, I wanna say, and I'm not really a fan of the review. You all know me, I'm more of a long form guy. I like to sit down, talk, meticulously go through everything. And I think that review is about like five minutes long for a game like Oblivion. Uh, nah, not a fan of it, Maddie. sorry. So let's talk about it more extensively here. Uh, one thing I really love about Oblivion that if you have never played this game, you gotta go do it because the opening to me is iconic. For those who don't know, I my first Bethesda Game Studios game was Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. A lot of people think it was Fallout 3 because it's the one I never shot up about. It's definitely my favorite BGS game, but Oblivion was my first and it's absolutely one of my favorites. Um, I. You know, it's that moment I, I remember leaving the prison area, seeing the open world, and just going, oh, brother, wow, what what does the guy do now? What's next? And there was really no direction. It was kind of aimless. To me, that was such a cool feeling. And then as you meet these factions and kind of make your own way through the world, it was very new to me. 
at the time when I bought my Xbox 360, I was years late. I got my 360 in 2008 or 2009, for those who don't know. So I was way, way, way behind. And honestly, it would have been even longer. I was still playing my PS2, no problem. I was enjoying like Kingdom Hearts 2 reruns. I was a freak in nature, man. But my friends pushed me into the Xbox 360 to get Mass Effect 1. It was Resident Evil 5, which I love to this day, and Call of Duty World at War. But Oblivion was my, my own discovery. I got it at GameStop for like, funny enough, about 10 bucks, the price that it's going for now, pretty much brand new. And uh, I remember when I picked it out, it was just kind of a blind guess. I just looked at the back and went, this looks cool. For a while, I didn't really use video reviews. I was very much a go with my gut kind of guy. And firing it up, playing it, and having that moment of like discovering the Dark Brotherhood. And that moment was just so, again, transformative to me of, I didn't even know this was here. Why are you, why is Lucy and LaChance engaging with me in the middle of the night, waking me from my sleep. I was just trying to restore my health. Who did I even kill? And then you get to a quest line, like in the Dark Brotherhood, which all it says to my dang and rampa brethren, Bethesda Game Studios gave us the ultimate salute. Really, they created dang and rampa. The way you're trapped in this house of people and you have to kill your way to get out of there, it is masterful. That's the thing that Oblivion, I think, holds above a lot of Bethesda Game Studios games. One thing people go hard for them on, they're writing. People think it's really bad. I think the criticism's a little overblown outside of Fallout 4. I think they're pretty solid writers, but it's not Obsidian levels, which I get. That's a pretty hard area from, I'd say, to reach, but I understand the criticism. However, I think Oblivion should be exempt from that criticism because it is one of the best written BGS games. I just, I love how the Emperor speaks to you. He's so eloquent. I love the personalities of these characters. And the one thing that really holds it back from shining nowadays is they got like five friggin' voice actors for the game. <laughs> That's one thing that if you fire it up this year, you'll be like, yo, everyone sounds the same. And then you'll randomly encounter like this one high elf. That's Todd Howard. You're like, what? Why? Is that Todd? It's hilarious. If anyone hasn't seen it here, I'm gonna play the clip for you here. Check it out. What? That really pisses me off. Oh no, what do we do? I'm so scared. Fabulous, that's great, good for you. You are pissing me off, what next? I'm sorry, I didn't know. When, I didn't know that, how can this be? So yeah, the voice acting, the facial animations in this game are hilarious, especially even some of the combat animations like the ability to run sideways in Oblivion is there. There's a lot of very familiar Bethesda Game Studios jank. This was kind of the start of it all. And I just, I feel like maybe those fond memories are what carried me through like Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, where I'm like, oh man, there it is. All that, that weird BGS jank, but still such a lovable game at its heart. So yeah, for me, like top tier factions are one of the main reasons I love Oblivion. Custom classes are another thing. Now, this wasn't introduced in Oblivion. It was in Morrowind. I haven't played Elder Scrolls, uh, Daggerfall, or Arena, so I don't know if it's in those games as well. Uh, but when it came to Oblivion, the ability to tag your major and minor skills, name your class, get a real vibe going for your build, like that to me was ultimate customization. And I really hope we see that in Starfield. To me, that would be amazing. Uh, that ability to say, oh, look at all these classes that Bethesda Game Studios has gone through. Like they, they did the Barbarian, the Archer, the Illusionist. Like, okay, these are all cool. The Thief, I like all these. But what if I wanted to make like a Shadow Thief or something like that and tag certain skills that fit that? I don't know. It just allows you to be yourself in a way that I don't think many RPGs really do well on the scale of Oblivion, mind you. I know many RPGs do it better in Oblivion, but they're tighter, they're smaller. With Oblivion being open world and having all these options for you, it just started to feel like a playground. That gets into one thing we talked about when going through the manual as well, spell crafting. Ah, so cool. That's what gave this game replayability is I really liked how they didn't fully pigeonhole you with your builds because there were multiple ways to scale your skills. In Oblivion, you could go to a trainer, you could, of course, use the skill and it would gradually go up, but you'd get those perks. And of course, having the major and minor skills made you get those perks a little bit quicker. So for me, like going in, I was going all in on like a warrior build and going back a second time with being a battle mage. Now I have like one mace and like crazy spells that I could switch over to that you could make for yourself. 
and they, to me that was awesome like the ability to make things that are better than what bgs made is such a underrated factor of their game and it's so funny because i remember with skyrim just a little bit off topic here people really hated on bethesda because the rare unique weapons and armor that you would get were worse than the ones that you could make at the blacksmith and i think in some cases that's not true but in a lot of cases it is true and I thought it was so cool though that you could make something better than what the developers intended for you to have as a player because the game was so free and open but a lot of people listed that as a complaint as they got deeper into the game i never really understood that because i think oblivion kind of holds that same energy i think it's awesome that oblivion's like go craft these wild spells and go destroy the world of course there are iconic moments too in this game that really define bgs like the adoring fan Everyone knows the adoring fan, Biozura. You know, he's always following you around. You can kill him if you want. It's, I don't know, the game's hilarious too, right? Like, I just think I, I can't help but play it now and put a smile on my face. Cause again, the voice acting's a little, it's not bad, that's the funny part. It's just limited. So you hear a lot of familiar BGS actors like Wes Johnson in 18 different roles. It can get a little familiar. Same thing with the dungeon design. Uh, one thing that back then when I played it was incredible, just the amount of locations you discover, the alien ruins, the dungeons uh, with caves in them, the houses you could explore, uh, but all of them were made by one person. And when you got hundreds upon hundreds of them, I think you can understand, you can even accept it. And it doesn't mean the dungeons are bad, they're still fun to explore, but you're not getting some of the diversity like maybe in Skyrim where there were some interactable puzzles in the middle of it, they would all loop back to the beginning. Oblivion was a little bit behind on that. But still, this was a game that for its time, you gotta understand like no one was doing it as big as BGS and everyone was underestimating them because they were this tiny studio, but they just had this magic to them. So for me, like I feel as if Starfield could be that game. Like when I look at the whole BGS lineup from Morrowind onwards, to me, this is the game that I look at and think, okay, this is the one I could see matching up well. The generation defining exclusive game that does things that no one really expected. Now, again, this could backfire. The game could absolutely suck. I'm not going to act like it can't after Fallout 76. Bethesda Game Studio has shown they're capable of really putting out a big stinker. But I feel like there's just a similar energy between those two games. And then, of course, the fantastic expansions. One thing that I look back at like Fallout 4, if there's one game I could pick that could have more DLC, it would have been Fallout 4 because I think after Far Harbor and Nuka World, it was like a big middle finger to everyone who was really crapping on Bethesda Game Studios for all the lacking rather of negative choices you could make in the game. It was really tough to be a bad guy. And they're like, here's Nuka World, all those settlements that you hate, you can now raid, kill and have them own. And I felt like you could have kept pushing in that direction, but they stopped after like a couple workshop DLCs and two true expansions. With Oblivion, it was just, of course, the horse armor. Let's get that out of the way. We'll pretend that one doesn't exist, but that's just a good sport about that. They joke about it a lot. They know it was stupid. However, they did put in the goaded Shivering Isles. They did put in Knights of the Nine, a new, a new quest line. Uh, so I just, Man, I just can't help but look at the whole entire package of this game and hope that this is what Bethesda Game Studios is trying to emulate with Starfield. And that's why I think it's worth playing. Uh, one thing worth noting, uh, the reason I've been playing it as of late on and off is uh, I gotta be real with y'all, not here, not, not at the 360, not in my Series X, although I did play it there at one point. But uh, your boy played it over on the Steam Deck. It is, it is verified great on deck. And... I really found this interesting because a lot of great on deck games aren't great on deck and I think Oblivion is okay on deck um, because you still have to use like the cursor and you have to use your right thumbstick to like move it around so it can be a little frustrating. Uh, but otherwise, this is a, a game that is incredible now to me to be able to play in handheld on the go. So this video was also partially fueled by my love for the Steam Deck. It's just... I'm consistently in awe with that system. It's amazing. Uh, so it's a great place to play that as well. And I, I wanted to mention that because I have a video of, of me being a complete dumbass, by the way, on my channel, uh, where I try to play Oblivion, uh, but I couldn't get it running. And I, I think there was an easy way to get it running. I still post it anyway. I own my mistakes. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna leave it up. You guys can make fun of me. I don't mind, uh, cause I was an idiot, but I couldn't get it running on my current PCs. And I still struggle to, to this day. It's not like Fallout 3 where it's like Windows Gaming Live is blocking it. Uh, it's something completely different. I forgot exactly what it was, but now on the Steam Deck, you can get it running 
with ease. You just download it, fire it up, and it works. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Okay, cool. I'm glad it works. So now I have a way to play it in a PC form, if you will. But that's all I really had to say about Oblivion. Just a lot of fantastic elements all coming together uh, between the factions, customization of classes and spells, the open world exploration, the amount of content there, the goaded expansions and DLC, the music. Oh my gosh, pause, pause, time out, time out, time out. Oh, how did I almost forget? Lord almighty. Hmm. Look, I know. I know we've seen some interesting stories about Jeremy Soule in the last couple of years, but that man's music in Elder Scrolls was iconic, especially KOTOR he worked on. And I think Oblivion, it, it goes like for me, Oblivion and Skyrim. Like I just, it depends what mood I'm in, but Oblivion, oh, like Harvest Dawn, there's some just incredible music. It will absolutely carry you through some of the familiar dungeons. They're, they're just, it's so, I can't find the word. It's so magical. It really is. I don't want to sell it too hard because I, I understand it's aged and I understand I'm a little biased, but I really do think Oblivion is a very special video game. So that's that's now all I feel I have to say about this game. What do you think about Oblivion? Let me know in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane. And again, if you like these types of videos, head on over to Retro Rebound where we are absolutely popping off right now. 34K subscribers and we are a rolling and it's been a great time over there. So if you like this vibe, you like these types of videos, head on over there. I think you'll like what we have. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, take excellent care of yourselves. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.